this could potentially be the only video you need to watch of all of the videos that I've made in the past and all of the tutorials coming up. If, uh, if you end up going down this route, uh, it could just jumpstart you into VR and your VR game could get quite a big leap forward in development time. And of course, I am talking about using an asset, auto hand is my favorite asset for procedural hands. So the highlight and shining feature of this asset is that the procedural grip hands are amazing. They can procedurally grip anything you want. You can also set custom poses. You can do two-handed grabs. There's physics involved. It's quite an asset. It is super, super fun. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to set it up, why you would want to get it, why you maybe you shouldn't get it um, and whatnot. So let's uh, jump in to the computer and I'll show you how to set it up. All right, we're starting out with a blank Unity 2021.2 project. And this is a URP project as well because the asset is set up in the built-in render pipeline. So I'll show you how to upgrade to URP as well um, with the new 2021 version as well because uh, some people don't know that the uh, button to upgrade all the materials changed. But anyway, I mentioned that this was a very easy setup. So I'll show you how easy it is. First thing we need to do is go to edit project settings and then we'll need to download the XR plugin management, just like you would need for any VR project ever. And after that installs, we need to download OpenXR. You could actually use different plugins. So you could use Steam. You could also use just basic XR without um, a you know, particular plugin. And you could also use Oculus if you wanted to. But OpenXR is kind of the uh, recommended plugin to use for this. And of course, we need to say yes so that it will swap to the new input system that'll restart Unity. Full disclosure, I have had personal conversations with the developer of AutoHand. Um, great person, and the, it's just one developer working on this asset. Um, and I do get a little bit of a kickback from the sales of this particular asset, but I mean, I get a kickback from all the uh, assets on the Unity Asset Store. So um, I'm not particularly um, biased monetarily one way or the other. Um, it's just, this was the, actually the first VR asset I ever bought. Um, bought it with my money, wasn't given it. Um, I've been given this asset to give away to people, um, but I bought my, my version um, and I've been loving it. I use it for 80, 90% of my personal projects. All right, enough of me ranting about how amazing the asset is. Let's jump into the computer, set it up in Unity, and I'll show you firsthand all the things you can do with it and uh, how great it is personally. And then last thing for setup is just clicking on the little warning, make sure you have no errors. So we're gonna edit this and add an interaction profile. And we're just using the Oculus Touch, so I'll stick with that. Um, and then just, in case you wanted to use Android, I'm going to swap everything to single pass instantiate or multi pass, excuse me, and then add a Oculus Touch controller profile to the Android tab as well. Now I can exit out of that. And then we can download AutoHand. So I've already purchased it from the Unity Asset Store, like I mentioned before. So all we have to do is go to Window, Package Manager. And then I'll swap over to my assets and search for auto hand. There we go. If you have previously downloaded it, make sure to re-download just so you get any updates that may have come in. And then we're going to import it. This will pop up a list of all of the assets that are gonna be included, just like you know, importing any other Unity asset. So we're gonna just import all of them. If you have used AutoHand before, know how it works, you could uncheck the scenes and all the default stuff that you don't necessarily need for a project. Um, but for this case, we're gonna, we definitely need the test scene. And look at this. This is all you need in order to set it up. It's so simple. So you drag the slider across as to how high of a quality you want your physics. 
I usually will go with one over 72 or one over 90, which is very high. So just pick one of those. So I'm going to pick very high in this case, hit apply, and that'll set up all the settings for you. So I'm going to exit out of package manager and then go into this new auto hand folder we have. And we need to go to packages and download the appropriate plugin. So we could do Oculus VR, OpenXR, Steam VR, or XR are the options. So since we're using OpenXR, I'm gonna double click that and that'll download a secondary package. This is just so it doesn't overload you with the incorrect packages. So that's why it's like a two part install. So download it from the package manager, set up what physics quality you want, download the particular package for the plugin that you're using, and now you're set up. That's it, that was it. So let's go to back to auto hand, examples, scenes, open XR. So we have this new open XR folder and then demo. We'll need to import TMP, the uh, text mesh pro asset. That's where all, that's what all the text being used is. And here we go. So this is our default scene and you'll notice that it's pink because we're using URP instead of the built-in render pipeline. So we'll need to address that before we actually jump in. But everything's functional at this point. Also, I'm going to turn gizmos off for, the, for now. All right, so the new way to upgrade your materials in 2021, so the old way, so if you're using 2020 or later, go to edit, and then down here is a um, render, is, is, I think it's called render pipeline or render or something, um, and then you click upgrade all, um, upgrade everything in project or something like that. I forgot what the exact word I guess. Um, but now that has actually moved over to window rendering and then render pipeline converter. And then here we want to convert all of our built in materials to URP. So I'm going to go through and check each one of these. This new system gives you a little more granular control of what you're actually upgrading. Um, so we're just going to go through and check all the boxes, click initialize, it'll go and search for what needs to be upgraded, and then come back and say, you know, is this what you actually wanted to upgrade? So see here, now we've got all of the, you know, we could individually check things if we wanted, but they're all checked by default. So I'm just gonna click convert assets and it'll run through and update everything for me. And there we go, now all our materials have been successfully converted. So if we take a little uh, look around, this is the default scene. So you're basically in a, you start out over here in this section and there's a little spoke and each one has a different kind of uh, interaction or whatnot. And then you have a little physics-based movement system over here. And then a door in the middle that you can actually open. So you start out with some different grabbables and then you move over and there is distance grabbing, smashing, some place points, so being able to specify what item goes in where, stickables and stabbing. And this is a new feature that recently came in. Um, some cool gadgets, so you get to actually like, you know, use the wheel and um, move it around, something that you could add into like a racing game, for instance. And then you have your uh, user interface stuff and then the uh, movement system. And then there's rigid bodies as well. So basically more um, grabbable examples, except these are all um, different kinds of rigid bodies that you could you know, potentially have. So now let's jump into the headset and I'll actually show you, you know, how it works and get a firsthand experience of, you know, all the interactions and whatnot. So you start out by the grab, by the grabbable examples. And you'll see we got some hands here. And the first thing you'll notice is your hands are not aligned correctly with the controllers. And that's because OpenXR has a little bit weird um, alignment kind of stuff. So I'm actually going to pause this, switch to game, play focused. And then over in the hierarchy, we want to click on the auto hand player container. 
the tracker offsets, and then the controller right and controller left, and then underneath each of those. So we're currently using the robot hands. You see these are um, the robot hands. So we need to adjust the offsets for each one. So I'm going to go to left, follow offset for the robot hand, and this is all during while you're in play mode. Um, and then just fine tune the rotation. So the uh, so like while you're you can kind of like look out the bottom of your um, headset and line up your hand with the um, virtual hand. So I'm going to move the uh, Y rotation a little bit and then the, oh, lost my mouse. And then the X rotation, so it matches up. And there we go. So now I've got a little uh, hand that matches up. So let's, um, first we need to copy the transform. So I'm going to right click, copy the component. And then when we jump out of play mode, reason being when we jump out of play mode, the values all uh, reset. So then we're going to paste the values in. And then we're going to do this one more time for the right hand, just to set that up. So right hand, make sure I'm selecting the right hand robot. And then same thing, adjust the X. I may not have to adjust the Y for this one. There we go. Copy this transform. Unplay and then paste the values back. And save. Um, and then I can go all the way back up here and apply this um, to our auto hand player container prefab. Save the scene. And then we can jump back into it and I can actually you know, show you the interactions. Um, but that's a uh, quick how to update your offsets. So let's jump back in and uh, I'll show you how things interact. So my favorite part by far is the wiggliness of the hands. So you can see when I move my hand back and forth ever so slightly, you'll see the fingers kind of wiggle back and forth. And that little part gives the hand so much more realism and makes it feel so much more lifelike. Like I can't even describe like it, that, that one little part right there just makes the whole asset. Anyway, um, so you have your basic kind of hands so you can press the grip button um, and the grip button also um, activates the UI laser. So we can interact with UI elements over there a little bit later. Um, and then your trigger finger, um, pressing the trigger will bring the triggers, trigger fingers down. And then also the uh, primary button will bring your thumbs down. And so we can just walk up to any of these items and um, you know, kind of move around. All of this is physics based as well. Um, so if I can you know, bump into things as well, So my hand can't go through the table. And then if I slide off, it comes back to where my hand actually is now. There's also two-handed grabs and you can specify whether an object is a two-handed grabbable object or not. And you'll see that as I'm kind of moving around this object, my hands procedurally grab, you know, however I grab the object. Um, and so maybe this cone would be a cooler example. So you'll see my thumb kind of curves to the bottom and then you'll see all of the uh, fingertips are all nicely arranged and even the, grabbing the top um, works just like you would normally grab it so like that's super super cool and then you also obviously have two-handed grab things we can interact with stuff so i can smash things throw bottles here's a demo of i can only pick that bottle up with the left hand that bottle up with the right hand also throwing works. Let me make sure I don't hit my monitor. There we go. Super, super cool. You can also reset all of this by pressing this button. And then here's like a, a zero G um, kind of cube here. 
little uh, stick, some bouncy balls, and you, you can see that these are grabbable by only one hand. So if even if I try to grab it by two, it just swaps back and forth. Moving on to the distance grabbing. So you have the Half-Life Alex version of distance grabbing. So if I press the grip button, we can aim where we're grabbing. And then by pressing the trigger, it flies to me based on my flick velocity. And then there's also a instant option as well. And then I think this one is also instant. Yep. But the, uh, the cube kind of flicks to me and you have to catch it. If you don't catch it, it kind of like flies past you. So if I flick it and it goes all the way over there. But super, super cool. So you got Half-Life Alex grabbing and distance grabbing. You have a gun set up for you. So gun interactions. And you'll notice that there is a specific pose for this gun. This gun will always have this particular pose. So you can swap back and forth between having procedural grips and just snapping to a particular grip. And that's also one of the items on the developer's Trello board, which he has publicly available that you can see that he is working on specific guns, two-handed guns, and whatnot to add into here. So you can you know, actually reload and do all that kind of stuff. The next section we have is place points. So here you can see where, how you know different things interact. And there's a little prompt that shows up, but you see like blue snaps, all of these snap a little, little different way. So like I can knock off these two, but I can't knock this one off. So there's like a whole bunch of different like little snapping things. These are all built in stuff to auto hand. So you just add a component to the right things. And the documentation is amazing too. Here's a cool new little feature. So like they're stickable objects. But if I grab wrong thing, so that doesn't stick. Stabbables. So I can whoop, hit the reset button. This is something that Hurricane VR has that is now in auto hand. So I can stab objects as well. And this is in uh, beta, so be mindful of that. So I can only stab green objects with this particular one and then this is also physics based as well so I can you know pick it up with my stick <laughs> almost like you're like uh, using a fork that would be kind of a cool uh, use case and I can pick up multiple ones if I want I'm not quite sure how the uh... oh there we go so I can set those on as well and you'll see there's like it's all physics based so i can turn it while it's on this stabbed pole super super cool i can see a lot of use cases for that here we have gadgets so you have your handy dandy steering wheel which feels really nice and natural and so you'll see that affects the hand there and then you have you know just different levers you can push and pull buttons more levers this is a lever that's anchored, or a little uh, joystick that's anchored. And then you have a joystick that is not anchored, so you can hold this joystick and move around. And then you also have like little dials you can turn. And then user interfaces. So you can do basic touching, so like touching UI, and then, you know, just reactions off of different things, or you can have like a little tablet type thing here so interact with the actual ui here and <laughs> looks like this one's kinematic so it just freezes and then before we get to movement there is also the uh, rigid body example so it's just basically showing off the rigid body um so like i can grab onto this but it has a brake force so if i pull away too hard it let it automatically lets go and so there's different elements to that. So this is one that I can grab. I can rotate it around, but I can't move it around positionally. And then, you know, you have some basic stuff. That one's uh, zero G with a high drag. And this one's zero G with no drag. Um, and then, you know, just some 
basic stuff. So it's a high drag, bouncy, and then like this one's heavy. So you can also do physics where you have to pick up things with both hands as well. So this one's easier to pick up with both hands because everything's physics based and very heavy. And then this, like for instance, I can, you know, barely move it as I drag it around, but I can't quite pick it up. And if I, you know, try to pick it up too hard, my hands will just disconnect because there's a brake force integrated into your hands. So you can only hold a certain amount, which is super helpful. And then finally, we have movement. So you have your basic, you know, jungle gym monkey bars that you can move around on, steps that you can walk up, steep angles, you know, you can traverse all of this stuff. Uh, the max head distance, so you can actually, so notice that you can look over, but, and then it like finally peeks you back. So you can actually look over, so the collider's not going straight down, which is nice if you want to be able to bend over tables and whatnot. So that's like what that's demoing, but you can't go through it. So you see it, it kind of pushes back at me, like it only lets me go a certain distance. And then you have climbing, of course, so I can grab these objects and pull them up and then fall down and then a ladder version of that as well. You have some moving platforms, so you can step up onto those. This spins me around, this one's a little motion sick. So these are cubes that I can walk into, these are cubes that I cannot, or maybe I think these are heavy cubes, maybe. These are cubes I can't grab. Maybe I can't grab any of the cubes. And then you can fly as well. This is kind of a, like a spectator mode. I can you know, just move around and it goes, it follows my head and my uh, thumbstick controller and then snap turning, of course. And go back in and turn that off. And then there's also a teleportation feature that you can turn off and on. That's gonna be in your inspector. Also, you can, you know, open doors and stuff. It's got a, this won't open unless I actually, you know, turn the handle and push it open and now I can. So there we go, there's the asset. I hope you like this really high level overview of the um, auto hand asset. If you are interested in me going into a little more detail about how to set this up with a project, for instance, then leave a comment down below. Um, and also leave a comment if you'd like to have me review something like Hurricane VR or the um, VR Interaction Framework or VRTK. There's a lot of VR assets coming out. Um, so if you would like me to review some of those and give you my thoughts on them, then uh, just leave a comment down below. If you're interested in purchasing this asset, I have an affiliate link down in the description. I would really appreciate it if you bought the asset through me, but if you don't want to, you can always find it by searching for it on the asset store. Anyway, if you would like to chat, uh, come hang out in the Discord. Uh, otherwise, I will see you next week.